It's an old instrument, but it's, it's an active instrument. The Joseph Dill Baker Memorial Carillon is a true treasure in the city of Frederick. Located in Baker Park, residents and visitors of all ages enjoy the sound of the bells as they stroll along Carroll Creek, play on one of the many playgrounds, and enjoy picnics near the band shell. This Memorial Carillon is the only true carillon in Maryland, as well as the state's largest instrument. If you haven't been to the top of the carillon, and you get an opportunity to do it, I would recommend it. It's really, really a unique experience to climb to the top of the Carillon. Spiral staircase, tight corridors, and when you get up there, it's much higher than what you think it's going to be. As you can see, there's two rows of keys here. We have this evenly spaced row, and we have this odd spaced row, twos, threes, twos, and threes. And when you look at it that way, you realize that it's a keyboard instrument. These evenly spaced keys, although they're not white, are the white keys. These oddly spaced keys, although they're not black, are the black keys. John has been the carillon player uh, for the city of Frederick at the Baker Park Carillon uh, for quite a few years. Uh, a fantastic relationship. John truly cares about the city, about the citizens, and he takes great pride in being the carillon for the city of Frederick. The ongoing value that it brings to people who are in the park or live in the park when the carillon is played, either when the chimes ring out every quarter hour or on weekends when John Weidman, uh, who's the caroloner, uh, comes down and plays it. The tone is wonderful and it really is a central part of the aural experience of Baker Park to hear that the bells and to hear him play that carillon on the weekends. been the city caroliner now for 26 years and then around August of 1992 we got home uh, to where we were living and there was a, an envelope with my name misspelled on it and a brass key in it and um, I had no idea what it was there was no note it was Dr. Brooks saying he was moving out of town the job was mine now <laughs> so they said, who are you? And eventually he straightened that up with them and I became the city caroliner in August of 1992. This wonderful piece of architecture is well documented through numerous paintings and photography and is a representation of the strong community here in Frederick. The carillon is one of those identifying images to the city, uh, to Baker Park. When you think of Baker Park, you think of the Carillon. The uh, Carillon was built in memory of Mr. Baker, uh, Joseph Dill Baker. He secured with his friends the parkland that we're standing on. He was a great philanthropist, and people loved Mr. Baker. His relatives still live in town. He died 10 years later in 1938, and they were seeking a suitable memorial to him. And um, people from all over town, hundreds of people gave, children gave pennies from their piggy banks to build this tower in memory of Mr. Baker. He was that beloved. And in 1941, uh, three years after he passed, it was dedicated to him. So this carillon was built in stages. The original bells came in 1941. I mentioned the towers built then. There were 14 bells. They've always called it a carillon. It wasn't a carillon. To be a carillon, it needs to have at least two octaves, which is 23 or more bells. And uh, it wasn't expanded to a carillon until 1966. It was a city election year in 1965. And there, there was a lot of apathy. And they had no primary. Everybody went on to the general election, but elections are expensive. So the funds were saved for this, and the caroliner said, we really need to add, I can't play enough tunes on the carillon, let's add nine bells and make it 23. And he talked them into spending the money that wasn't spent on the 1965 primary city election on this instrument. And that was how renovation number two happened. Friends of Baker Park was founded in 1991 by Victoria Seward, who was a neighbor to the park, and 
uh, as such, she was concerned about especially the trees. As you know, trees need to be pruned, trees need to be planted as, as trees die. And so she was concerned about the quality and the status of the trees in Baker Park. And that led to the formation of, of this friends group to help the city as, uh, as a way of enhancing and maintaining the park. One of the early projects that we were engaged with was the refurbishment of the Carillon, which had been severely damaged by the floods that took place in 1976. And that, of course, led to the Carroll Creek project, which led to the viaduct to take the stormwater underneath the city as opposed to through the city. But again, before all of that happened, we had that terrible flood, and so it essentially wrecked the Carillon. The Carillon didn't fall down, but it was flooded inside, and so a lot of stuff had to be refurbished and repaired. So in 1995, Friends of Baker Park got involved as a lead group in the refurbishment of the Carillon. So Dean Price uh, realized that uh, we needed some sort of a, a signature accomplishment that would put the Friends of Baker Park on the map, uh, a way to get the rest of the public to understand that they existed and, and to support what we're doing, even though we had already gotten a lot of members of people who, who lived around the park and were interested in. So she recognized that the Carillon, that this was sort of the jewel in the crown of the park, and yet it was in sort of bad shape. When we added 26 more bells, it's 49 bells now. And this was the main thing they dedicated on September 10th, 1995 for the city's 250th birthday. They celebrated the birthday with this. A full Carillon has almost 50 bells in it. So we needed to make more bells to make it a full Carillon. Those can only be made in Holland because no bells are made in the United States anymore. So when we finally had the work done and we dedicated the carillon again, and our master carillonier, John Widman, who played it for the first time for the public with the, all the bells in place, uh, what we realized is we'd given new life to this thing that had been dedicated to honor Joseph Baker, who gave so much to the city. Uh, and here it stands now in honor of the future as a, as a terrific jewel in the crown of our, of our park. It's, it's a musical instrument. It's also an architectural beauty and a monument. I think the Caroline will always be part of Frederick. Uh, it's, it, it's a structure uh, that, that is located in probably our, um, our most famous park uh, that we have within the city of Frederick. Um, it speaks not only to the history of Baker Park and the history of Frederick and the history of the Carillon itself, uh, but also speaks to the future of Frederick uh, as new people move to the area and visitors come to the area. I think it's important because we need to remember as a community that we stand on the shoulders of giants, and certainly Joseph Bill Baker was one of those giants. Uh, and, and so I think a lot of times people assume that because something exists when they show up, it's always existed and just dropped out of the heavens somehow. And, and so I really think it's great that we got together as a community to recognize, again, the legacy of Joseph Dill Baker and to appreciate what our community has, had, has done, did do in the past uh, with the construction of the Carillon and then the 1995 refurbishment that Friends of Baker Park was part of, because we need to keep these institutions fresh in people's minds as far as why they exist, as well as pay attention to, we need to keep maintaining them as time moves on. The Baker family has always loved the instrument. We call it the Carillon. Their family that's still around still calls this, this tower grandfather. This is, this is their grandfather. They call it grandfather. So it's kind of endearing. I like that name. Thank you to John Widman, the Friends of Baker Park, the City of Frederick's Parks and Recreations Department, and the residents of this great city for the continuing support of the Joseph Dill Baker Memorial Carillon.